Hi, my name is Natasha Bell and I'm from Gulf Savannah NRM. We've heard accounts from traditional owners out in the Gulf that they've seen a decline in the numbers of freshwater turtles. We want to know why and find out more. We're going to be talking to the Uriman traditional peoples on Tullaroo Station in Etheridge Shire and Takalaka people of Littleton National Park in Croydon Shire. Freshwater turtles are culturally significant for Aboriginal people and make up a big part of our traditional diets. They are a part of our traditional storylines and song lines and these could disappear with the freshwater turtles themselves. We think that feral pigs might be one of the culprits based on the studies done in Cape York and in the Northern Territory, where pigs were found to have preyed upon up to 94% of the freshwater turtles in some of the wetlands. So come and join us as we talk to the traditional owners, indigenous rangers, park managers and freshwater ecologists to find out more. Near that place there, that's a food source. That lake would have been a food source for ceremonies. Yep. So that's where they would have got all their food from. So what sort of food would we be mainly talking about? Oh, yeah, like turtle, waterfowl and yeah, turtle. turtles and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of um, t turtle harvesting that would have went on there, what, what would have been the sort of main techniques? Just oh, spears. 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 The, the, they get into digging them up, the east of eight digging them, so? Yeah, digging them up, but then at that time, you know, because of digging them up, they're mud, really yeah. muddy taste yeah. and everything yeah. like that. But I suppose if there was no other food source around at that time, they wouldn't have yeah. ate them. Yeah, yeah. Because turtle is a delicacy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Pretty important culture. And, and, and even, even the eggs are more of a del delicacy. Yeah. But that would have had to be done in a sustainable way also. Yeah, yeah. What sort of a, what sort of, Pig disturbances, that one got going on? I'd say there'd be a lot of pig damage around there, yeah. especially over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, like, for as long as pigs have been here, there's going to be a lot more damage. Yeah. And and a lot of the stuff that used to be there, like your medicines and your food source and everything, aren't there anymore simply because of all the digging up. Yeah, yeah. Some of the research that's been done in the Northern Territory have shown up to three quarters of the east of eight and adult turtles can get consumed by pigs in one, one dry season. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, know, as I said, you know, the, the, the turtle population, along with a lot of other things, certainly would be declined. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's going to be that like a, like a 20 to 30 year period where turtles have got in, you know, the, the pigs have got into the turtle's eggs and everything like that. Yeah. So there's going to be a, a generation that not many numbers of those turtles are going to be yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's some that there's just not that much broader community appreciation. I mean, people understand that feral pigs are a problem, but they don't realise how great a predation pressure they're placing on so much of our wildlife, particularly particularly turtles in this instance that we're looking at and whatnot. Yeah, and, and look, you know, they get, they get so desperate and everything. Even the fencing we find with the fencing, is it, it's, they are smashing the fences also. Yeah, right. They're actually getting down underneath them and lifting them up. Yeah, right, right. So until we come up with a better way of doing it, yeah. this has got to do, you know. Well, that's the thing with pigs. There's no one silver bullet, is it? It's no. got to be a bunch of, you know, you, you still need your shoot and you need your bait and you need your trapping. And where you've got special high-value wetlands, there's a role for fencing. Yeah, and you know, like, you know, like you're looking at Tullaroo here you now, you've got Everly, you've got Mistletoe, you've got Dagworth, you've got Manly, you've got Ullarat, Mount Surprise. It has to be an effort by everybody. Coordinated. Yeah. Across the whole landscape. Yeah. Obviously a few pigs must be getting through the fence, but nowhere near what you'd normally see for these sort of swans. No, there's not as many as you'd probably, you know, like when it was unfenced. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, all that area was just chewed up all the way through there. Yeah. You notice when we came in there, you could see all that country being chewed up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's less of, less of damage and everything like that, so it has worked. Yeah. But, and see, and that's, that's, that's another indicator also for us. When you see your lily pads and everything like that, that indicates healthy country sort of thing. Yeah, yep, yep. You know, they're all, all indicators itself, so. A healthy environment itself. Yeah. Well, she's pretty dry country, the, the Gulf Savannah, so where yeah. you've got those wetlands, special part of the landscape, eh? Hey? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of um, biodiversity and wildlife generally depend on that seasonal hotspot. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and as I said, you know, the biodiversity through this, through this country is just incredible. Yeah. What we've got an example of here is what pigs do. So 
Instead of leaving that dry thatch covering the ground down to the edge of the swamp, it's all been rotary hoed by pig disturbance. If there are any east of eight and turtles in the mud there, they'll take the opportunity to dig them up and, and have a feed on them now. The turtles would be dependent on getting underneath the um, thatch down at the wet mud edge there and, and burying themselves for the end of the dry season, waiting for the wet season rains to come. We, we um, well, fry them on the fire, coals, and um, so when we open them, that, we hit them there and hit them there, and we just pull the shell off. Then when we pull the shell off, you'll have all your meat. If we lose our turtles, if we lose this storyline, we lose our connectedness to this space. Um, our song lines talk about our connectedness to land, to um, each other, to this wonderful place that we call home. Um, we've been able to share it with Takalaka, with the Yoruman people, and in doing that, we've heard that story being retold. If our story about our turtles disappear, then that connectedness to this space disappears. Our song line will get lost. It, it becomes um, something like a myth. Mm -hmm.